3,000, that's up 475 uh, and is the biggest rise yet as the number of cases there climbs above uh, 35,000. And as we know, uh, the country's healthcare system is struggling to cope. Sky's Sally Lockwood joins me now from Rome. And Sally, that is a, a big jump in uh, deaths, 475 uh, deaths in the last 24 hours. Yeah, that's right, Mark. We've been waiting uh, for these numbers to dip after this national lockdown, which is into its ninth day now. But these numbers just keep growing. Uh, this, the biggest loss of life uh, since this emergency began here in Italy, as you say, 475 people losing their lives to coronavirus in the last 24 hours. my extraordinary extraordinary gratitude to staff in all of our schools colleges nurseries and universities who have been doing so much I know the situation has become increasingly challenging I've said before that if the science and the advice changed such that keeping schools open would no longer be in the best interests of children and teachers, that we would act. We are now at that stage. The spike of the virus is increasing at a faster pace than anticipated. And it is crucial that we continue to consider the right measures to arrest this increase and to relieve the pressure on the health system. The public health benefits of schools remaining open as normal are shifting. It is also clear that schools are increasingly finding it more difficult to continue as normal, as illness and self-isolation impacts on staffing levels and pupil attendance. I want to provide parents, students and staff with the certainty that they need. After schools shut their gates on Friday afternoon, they will remain closed until further notice. This will be for all children, except to those of key workers and where children God. who are most vulnerable. The scientific advice shows that these settings are safe for this small number of children to continue attending. But asking others to stay away will just go towards helping us slow the spread of this virus. Examples of these key workers include NHS staff, police and delivery drivers who need to be able to go to work. Vulnerable children include those who have a social worker and those with educational health and care plans. Looking after these children will enable schools to support the country through this incredibly and extremely challenging time. We are expecting early years providers, sixth forms and further education colleges to do the same. We are working with Her Majesty's Treasury on the financial support that will be required. I'm also asking that independent schools and boarding schools follow the same approach. We will give schools the flexibility to provide meals or vouchers to children who are eligible for free school meals. Some schools are already doing this and we will make sure that those costs are reimbursed. As soon as possible, we will put in place a national voucher system for every child who is eligible for free school meals. You are. Hmm. I know that all of this yeah. is not going to be easy. I'm asking nurseries, schools and colleges to be at the forefront of our national response to this crisis. He's going to update us in a second about that. I want to repeat that everyone, everyone 
must follow the advice to protect themselves and their families, but also, more importantly, to protect the wider public. So stay at home for seven days if you think uh, you have the symptoms. Remember the two key symptoms, a uh, high temperature, uh, a continuous new cough. Whole household to stay at home for 14 days if one member of that household thinks uh, he, she has uh, the symptoms. Avoid all unnecessary gatherings, pubs, clubs, bars, restaurants, theatres and so on. Work from home if you can. Uh, wash your hands. And uh, we've all already announced in the uh, last few days we will massively scale up our testing capacity in the weeks ahead so that we hit 25,000 tests a day. Huge public information campaign is being rolled out so people uh, get all the information they need. We need to protect ourselves and others. Uh, we're asking retired healthcare professionals to come back and help us cope, help, help the NHS to cope with this unprecedented challenge. And we will continue, as we have from the beginning, to do the right thing at the right time and to follow the best scientific advice. And we come today to the key issue of schools, uh, where we've been consistently advised that there is an important trade-off. And so far, the judgment of our advisors has been that closing schools is actually of limited value <coughs> in slowing the spread of the epidemic. And that's partly because, counterintuitively, schools are actually very safe environments. And uh, in this disease, in this ep epidemic, children and young people are much less vulnerable. And hitherto, uh, the advice has been that we should keep schools open, if possible, in order to reduce the pressure on the NHS and, uh, and on all other public services. But I think you'll, you'll agree that I've always been very clear that this is a balanced judgment and one that we've kept under constant review. So looking at the curve of the disease, and looking at where we are now, we think now that we must apply downward pressure, further downward pressure on that upward curve by closing the school. So uh, I can announce today, and uh, Gavin Williamson is making a, a, a statement now in the, in the House of Commons, that after schools shut their gates from Friday afternoon, they will remain closed for most pupils, for the vast majority of pupils, until further notice. And I'll come to, uh, I'll explain what I mean by the vast majority of pupils. The objective is to slow the spread of the virus, and as I say, we judge that this is the right moment to do that. But of course, as I've always said, we also need to keep the NHS going and to treat the rising number Not of sure cases. So we need health workers Not who are also about parents this. Sure. to continue to go to work. And we need other critical workers with children mm -hmm. to keep doing their jobs too, from police officers who are keeping us safe, to the supermarket delivery drivers, social care workers uh, who look after the elderly and who are so uh, vital. We'll, we'll be setting out more details shortly about who we mean, whom we mean in, in, in these groups. So we therefore need schools to make provision for the children of these key workers who would otherwise be forced to stay home. And they will also need to look after the most vulnerable children. This will mean that there will of course be far fewer children in the schools and that will help us to slow the spread of the disease. And these measures are crucial to make sure that the, as I say, the critical parts of the economy keep functioning and, and public services keep functioning. So we're simultaneously asking nurseries and uh, private schools to do the same, and we're providing financial support where it's needed. We're making provisions to supply meals and vouchers for children eligible for free school meals. And where some schools are already doing this, I want to make it clear that we will reimburse the cost. And of course, this does mean that exams will not take place as planned in May and June, though we will make sure that pupils get the qualifications they need and no exams for their academic career. No now, job. I know that Later. these steps will not be easy for parents no or for teachers, me, Mama. and for many parents this will be frustrating. <laughs> 
and it will that's be bad. No, it says on the back of a gym to go out and, uh, to work. Yeah. And of course, that's one of the you know, reasons uh, we haven't there. wanted to, to go ahead. Yeah. Uh, and that's why uh, we're now working on further measures to ensure that we support not just businesses, but also individuals and their families to keep our economy going, as Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor, outlined yesterday. I also need to remind parents, as we've already advised, that children should not be left with older grandparents or older relatives who may be particularly vulnerable, according to some of the vulnerable groups. And I, I want to, I know that's going to be difficult too. And I want to thank Can families for their sacrifice at this difficult time. Jealous. I want to thank mm. the whole country for the efforts that people are making to comply uh, with these measures. I particularly want to thank teachers, head teachers, uh, all the support staff who keep schools going, uh, who are going to be able to make these exceptional arrangements work for the benefit of us all. By looking after the children of key workers, they will be a critical part of our fight back against coronavirus. And as I've said, we will take the right steps at the right time, guided by the science. We believe the steps we've already taken, uh, together with those I'm announcing today, are already slowing the spread of the disease, but we will not hesitate to go further and faster in the days and weeks ahead. And we will do whatever it takes so that we beat it together. And I'm now going to uh, pass it to, to Patrick to give an update from Sage's point of view. Thank you. Overriding consideration, as always, save lives, protect the most vulnerable people from this illness. The vast majority of people have a mild illness, but some get a very severe illness. The measures that were announced a couple of days ago we already know are taking effect in terms of behaviour, so we can see that already, that people have actually taken that very seriously and have made a difference, and that's really important to carry on with that. But the thing we must protect in order to achieve those aims of saving lives and protecting people is to make sure that the NHS intensive care capacity and the ventilator capacity is not breached. That's what we need to keep looking for at making sure we do not get to a position where that's breached. As this moves fast, and I alluded to this on Monday, more measures will be needed to make sure that happens. And right from the beginning, we said schools are one of the things you can do, but they're less important than some of the others that have been taken. But we now think we're at a stage where this extra bit is an important measure to make sure we stay under that critical protecting the NHS, ICU and ventilator capacity. So that's the reason for now saying that this should go ahead at this time. It's important to stress, and this is really critical, it's not because schools are dangerous places for children. They're not. Children have a very mild or asymptomatic version of this disease in many cases. So they are at the least at risk. It's also not a dangerous place for teachers. The reason for this is because of the effect it can have just to knock down further the transmission, the put some delay into the system, put some breaks into the system of the transmission of this disease to bring it down to protect those people who might get the much more serious version and end up in intensive care or on a ventilator. So that's the reason. Now is an important time to do it. It's not instead of, and it can't supplement the other measures. The other measures are crucially important. 